Hi, we wanted to start a chat with Erica about the evolution of what we're calling the Actors Toolkit, especially when it's focused on auditioning. And so let's divide this up and just, uh, we're gonna uh, stroll down memory lane here when the two, two of us started back in, in this business, and that is, just just talk about tapes. Early right. on in our career, how did an actor get you a tape of exactly. his work? Exactly, yes, right. there were no computers. Right, right, yeah. When I started, we actually had just gotten a fax machine, and it was not plain paper. That was a big deal, yeah, when sure. we, when it, but it was the rolly paper. And so instead of actors coming to the casting office and picking up the sides that we um, uh, you know, mimeographed, then that's that. That was when I started. So, uh, tapes were definitely something a working actor needed, and if they were either on VHS, that was great, or sometimes Beta, and uh, and those were the big, huge, huge yeah, guys. Chunky, but though, yeah. they would, you know, have tapes at home. They'd have them duplicated at some place, and then they would call a messenger service. And that messenger service was like on a bike or in a car, and they would bring the tape, and then we'd have them. And we had walls and walls and walls of shelves with actors' tapes, demo tapes on them, and all labeled. And that's that's what we did. And and it's amazing because the actor today absolutely still needs tape. Actually, I think even more so because yes. everything is so digital. And when I click on a picture and resume, I expect there to also be some sort of real. Um, that I can take a look at. And it is something that the actor in the old days, of course, had to pay for the messenger, had to pay for the actual physical tape, had to pay for the demo reel to be made, etc. And I know there are a lot of services today, and it's funny because I had a hard time, honestly, I had a hard time wrapping my head around actors paying for some of these services online because I felt like, oh, they're taking advantage. And then I always go back to, well, they had to pay, actors had to pay this amount and this amount, sure. this amount for things. Same so thing. I think there's actually a sweet spot somewhere in there where it's a really important tool to have and you do need to invest in your career at points. So if you accelerate it beyond the VHS days to where it is now, my, my tip, my advice would be is that the more you know about self-taping, the more you know about this, the better it's going to be. Even if you are taking it to somebody else, at least now you know how to cut what's best, how to even take yes. that shot as you're happening in the self-taping. It so is, well, it used to be that demo reels, not self-taping um, specifically what you're talking about, but, but demo reels used to be one reel with everything together. Right. And now, more and more, more and more, it is each show is a different icon. I'm still old school. I still want to see the demo reel. And many of my most favorite um, experiences is I go and I look at all the icons and at the end it says demo reel. And I'm like, yes, I got it all in <laughs> one. And I just click because, because believe it or not, it takes time to click. And I know it seems crazy, but when it takes 10 seconds to load a video, even two, honestly, even two seconds to load a video, I'm not going to watch all of them. If it's a demo reel and it's all in one, I can do boom, 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 boom. And I can go fast forward or I can just watch the whole thing. And those demo reels, I mean, when they're seven minutes, I'm like, oh, please, like that, that, they're, th that's too long. I mean, even pro actors who have hundreds and hundreds of movies don't have a seven minute long demo reel. You know, keep it under five, but preferably under two. Um, with just your best work. And it doesn't have to be the entire scene so I have the context of the story. I just want to see you. And at the very beginning of the demo reel, I want to look at your face. So if the scene, let's just say it's a scene between the two of us, and the first shot and the first line that, that's your demo reel, Richard, and the first shot is of me saying a line to you and then you have this great reaction, well, you can just start with your great reaction. You don't even have to hear yeah, my line, which point. seems crazy because mm -hmm. it's out of context. But as soon as I see the actor's face on a demo reel at the very beginning, I think it's the demo reel for that person. Yeah. The other thing you can do just technique-wise is, is to hold that uh, frame and have it be a voiceover. You can actually, you could yes. extend that frame and have it be, you know, in a freeze yes. frame and it'd be a voiceover. The point here being, he, you, they see your face for the first time in a wonderful shot. And even if you freeze it a little bit, then move into the action. Again, this is a technical thing. So for me, the advance is that I think an actor now has to be, and, and the younger generation is, mm -hmm. much more technically savvy about what's going on, to understand Absolutely. cameras, understand editing, so that they can help that process Exactly, along. and I mean, having pictures and resumes, yeah. for sure, it's always been the standard, but the type of picture now is absolutely a headshot because you're looking at it or I'm looking at it the size of the postage stamp 
online and um, having multiple looks for your agent and everything that still is standard but it is actually more looks are prevalent today as opposed to the old days where you had to print it out and it was very mm -hmm. very expensive now you actually have a lot of looks and I think a demo reel slash tape on yourself is important and then along with that the ability to self tape which never happened in the old days there weren't even cameras we used to see people and remember them and write notes and then bring them back right. and if they had a screen test it was really expensive for the studio and that's when we had cameras but now everyone should absolutely have a camera and an iPhone is great but I can tell you personally and I wouldn't have said this six months ago honestly six in the last six months I have noticed that the self tape quality production quality has increased ex exponentially you mm. know it the the sound quality the lighting quality and um, the setting and the background quality more and more people go to professional people to put themselves on tape so if you are doing it yourself which is absolutely acceptable you just need to have an incredibly good eye and be trained and know that you your equipment I mean you don't have to have the fanciest equipment you just need to know how to bounce light and we have a whole other video on that um, because you are competing with people that have really great production value now and that's changed I mean in my opinion that has changed so much in the last six months and I would have said oh anyone can do anything but now it's not it's much 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 more professional right and it's better to do that as a team if you can get somebody oh, to help yes. you a partnership another actor a director that you mm -hmm. care about to really really do that and this is where again budget wise we talked about the changes in budget that has to be budgeted in if you're really, if you're yeah. listening to this, what you're really doing is saying, part of my budget is if I can't do that myself, I'm hiring somebody to get that exactly. done. And that's part of the basic yeah. toolbox. I mean, that's expected yeah. that you're going to yeah. be able to self-tape. And, um, and then there's a lot of coaches out there. There's a lot of services that are quite helpful uh, with that as well. So yeah. Now, here's an interesting thing, too. In the, the, do you think, have you seen over the, say, let's over the last 10, 15 years or so, any aesthetic changes in the toolkit for an actor? Or is that basically the same? This is the I auditioning think the aesthetic, toolkit. The aesthetic is in the style of acting. And uh -huh. I actually want to write a blog on this at some point. Because you know when we went from oh, melodrama, say, to... I mean, I mean, so, so originally, cameras were so heavy you couldn't move them. So most everything was on an incredible wide shot, right? I mean, think of... Charlie Chaplin movies, right? Yes, yeah. Boy. So, and then cameras became smaller and lighter and smaller and lighter and more movable. And we're at a place now with, with the smallest, lightest, most agile cameras possible. Um, I'm sure they'll be even smaller in the future. But coupled with the dawn of reality television. So people are used to seeing people that aren't actors or that aren't acting supposedly right aren't acting mm -hmm. they're real so i think the style in general in a huge broad sweeping style of acting is so naturalistic now compared to what it was even 10 years ago i mean if you go look at even field of dreams those are wonderful performances but it's a movie and today in some of the independent films it's so raw you're not sure if it's a documentary or if it's that and I think that with a lot of television shows and a lot of great things on AMC and HBO and, and Netflix and all sorts of um, different streaming services, you can you can start seeing the acting just be so nuanced. And then of course the development of HD. There's also anyway I could go on and on about it, but I think the style of acting is different. Yeah, and, and that, that's been true uh, all through history too. That mm -hmm. and, uh, you're talking about not only on stage, but what is considered real and natural changes con consistently. Yes. And I, I do it with my, my my students. I ask them to do a little film festival and get a good Spencer Tracy film, a good Paul Newman film. And and then watch True Detective and watch the yeah. difference between these master actors and what they consider to be real and honest acting in those gen generations and uh, in the same genre. You can, yeah. you, you can get each one of them doing a detective and find that, that, that the reality of what you're talking about is very simply that, yeah. that it round and now becomes breathtakingly honest if you're going to do yeah. good film and TV work. And that really aesthetically is really something that needs to study and be a part of. Exactly. Too. And then that's why I think even looping back into the actor's toolbox, 
And that's why you have to have, you've got HD, you've got these performances that are really nuanced and very honest, and so you get this camera equipment and you get a professional setting and you can deliver what is needed as opposed to something that's not lit well and we can't really see you very well and we can hear you okay, but there's a bus in the background and it's just, it's imperative. It's imperative to see you. That's really the bottom line.